Okay, so today we are going to start talking about uh, graphs. We are going to look at, we are going to spend quite a lot of time understanding the basic definitions and terminology associated with graphs, see some examples. And then uh, if time permits, we are going to do the graph abstract data type, right? Or I think we will be able to do the graph abstract data type today. So question is what is a graph? So uh, pictorially, this is what a graph is and what are the terms we are going to have. So graph is always represented by a two tuple, V and E typically. V is what we will call the set of vertices, okay? And E we will call the set of edges, right? So set of vertices and a set of edges together specify a graph. So in this picture, these red circles are the vertices. I have given each of these vertices a name A, B, C, D, E to distinguish them and the blue lines are the edges. So an edge really is a pair of vertices, an edge is a pair of vertices or an edge is specified by giving a pair of vertices. So an, this edge is set to connect vertices U and V or we will not use the term connect but this edge is an edge between U and V. When I say E is equals U V is an edge, then that means that it is an edge between vertices U and vertex V, vertices U and V. So for instance, in this, this example could be specified, this graph could be specified either by giving this drawing or giving these, this detail as in V, the set of vertices is 5 vertices A, B, C, D, E and what are the edges I have? I have, so each edge as you can see is an is a pair of vertices, an unordered pair of vertices here, right? A comma B is the same as B comma A. All that specifies is it is an edge between vertices A and B, okay? So A comma B, A comma C is this edge, A comma D is this edge, B comma E is this, C comma D is that, C comma E is this and D comma E is this. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 edges and there are the 7 pairs mentioned here. Yeah? Clear? So a set of vertices and a set of edges. So uh, what are they used for? Lots and lots of applications, right? You can model circuits as, as graphs, right? Each of the component of your circuit could be a vertex, right? So this could be a vertex, 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 this is a vertex which is your CS201. You are trying to find that the path of least resistance to get to CS201, right? They can be used to model networks. So I can take the map of the city, right? And every intersection could be modeled as a vertex and the roads which are connecting two intersections, right, could be modeled as an edge, right? And then that could be a graph and I could then ask, start asking questions on um, you know, various questions on whether how can I reach, go from this place to this place by asking the corresponding question on a graph. So transportation networks, lots of these communication networks, all of them are modeled as graphs, okay? Uh, one more example. So this is a typical student day, right? So you wake up, you uh, meditate first about 201, then you eat. Maybe you work, then more CS201, play CS201 programming, sleep, then you dream of CS201. <laughs> this cycles, right? Too idealistic. Huh? Too idealistic. Fun? Is, there's no room for any other course, is there? No. <laughs> this is the day before the mind. Okay, so this is slightly different from the graph that I had shown in the previous example. Why? Directed, right? So this is what we will call a directed graph, right? Because you can't do any meditation before you wake up, right? So there is clearly an edge going from wake up to meditation, right? So every edge has a direction associated with it, right? We will call such graphs directed graphs. Right? So we will also consider directed graphs, but in the rest of this lecture, I am going to spend most of the time with undirected graphs. Whatever things I define, you will carry over in a straightforward way to directed graphs as well. So I'll tell you what the differences are. So to begin with, let me go back to a previous slide. 
in this example or in this definition, where would the difference be when I am talking of a directed graph? So, E comma U V is not just a pair, it is a ordered pair let us say, right. So, the ordering is important. The first vertex would typically, typically specify what the start of the edge is or the origin of the edge and the other would specify the destination of the edge, where the edge is going from. So, what is the start and what is the end? Okay. Uh, so, as I said today uh, is a fairly simple lecture, we are going to look at lots of terminology. So, you, for now you have understood what a graph is. So, there are two kinds of graphs, a directed graph and an undirected graph. So, a graph which is not directed is called an undirected graph and you know understand what a vertex is, what vertices are and what edges are. Adjacent vertices. So, two vertices, so this is all terminology associated with an undirected graph now. So, two vertices which are connected by an edge are called adjacent, right. So, who can tell me, uh, sorry, uh, is this vertex and this vertex, these two vertices are they adjacent? No, they are not connected by an edge, right. Well, this and this are adjacent, this and this are not adjacent either, yeah. So, vertices which are connected by an edge are called adjacent. The degree of a vertex, the degree of a vertex is the number of adjacent vertices it has, yeah. So, what is the degree of this vertex? 3. So, in fact, I have written down the degrees of the various vertices on these, right. So, this vertex is degree 2, this vertex is degree 3, this is degree 3, this is degree 3, yeah. Everyone understands the degree of a vertex, it is the number of adjacent vertices. So, sometimes we say that this edge is incident to these two vertices, right. Should I write down the word? So, this edge, so if I label this, so let us say this vertex is like vertex A and vertex B and this edge is E. So, E equals A B is incident. two vertices A and B, yeah. So, this edge is incident to these two vertices. Similarly, this edge is incident to this vertex as well as this vertex. So, the degree of a vertex can also be defined as the number of edges which are incident to that vertex, right. So, there are three edges which are incident to this vertex. So, the degree of this vertex is 3, right. These are equivalent ways of saying the same thing. Great. Uh, so, question what is the sum of the degrees of all the vertices? 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2, kitna hua? 14. Twice the number of edges. Twice the number of edges, good, yeah. Twice the number of edges. Because when I am counting, so let us think of it in the following manner. So, the answer is right, twice the number of edges and the argument is actually half a line of an argument. So, pictorially I would say the following, when I am counting 3 for this, I am counting 3 because I am counting this one edge, this edge and this edge. So, let me put 3 stones, right, one on each of these 3 edges. Then when I am counting 3 here, I am counting this edge, this edge, let me put down 3 stones. Then here I am putting down 2 stones. Here I am putting down 3 stones, here I am putting down 3 stones. So, I have put as many stones or pebbles if you want, as many pebbles as the sum of the degrees of the vertices, yes. Now, if I look at any edge, how many pebbles are there on that edge? Exactly 2, yeah. So, the sum of the degrees of the vertices equals 2 times the number of edges. Great. So, that is degree and uh, you understand what degree is, you understand what an adjacent vertex is, what adjacent vertices are. Now, let us define the notion of a path. So, a path in a graph 
is a sequence of vertices, let us say V1, V2, Vk such that consecutive vertices have an edge between them. Right? So, if I take vertex V i and V i plus 1, then these two vertices are adjacent, there is an edge between these vertices. So, there are two examples here. Uh, so, this is my graph, the same graph as before. Recall that there is an edge between C and E also, right? So, this is a path A, B, E, D, C, E is a path. Why is this a path? Because there is an edge between A and B, there is an edge between B and E, there is an edge between E and D between D and C and C and E. So, this is a path. Similarly, this is a path B E D C because there is an edge between B and E between D and E between D and C, right. It is easy to construct examples which are not paths, right. Suppose I had written down A B C, A B C is not a path in this graph, why? because while there is an edge from A to B, there is no edge from B to C, right. So, everyone understands what a path is. Any questions so far? Okay. A simple path is a path in which no vertex is repeated, right. So, this is an example of a simple path B E C these three vertices are all distinct. So, it is a simple path. A cycle is a simple path in which the first and the last vertices are the same, right. So, A C D A is a cycle. Okay. D A C D is the same cycle, right. C D A C is also the same cycle. So, you can read the cycle anywhere. This is a cycle, this is a simple path. In the previous slide, we had an example of a path which is not simple. This is not a simple path, right. Why? This is not a simple path because vertex E is repeated here. So, in a simple in a cycle is a simple path except that the first and the last vertices are the same, that is what a cycle is. Okay. A graph is said to be connected if there is a path between every pair of vertices in the graph. Aap koi bhi do vertices agar le, so, unke beech mein agar path hai, toh we will say that the graph is connected, right, okay. Is this graph connected? Path hai, kisi bhi do vertices ke beech mein path hai, mein ye nahi keh raho ki dhar do vertices ke beech mein edge honi chahiye. So, in dono vertices ke beech mein bhi path hai, kya path hai, bhoat sare path hai, ek ye path hai, एक ये पाथ है और भी कोई पाथ है बहुत सारे हैं ये पाथ है एक एक ये पाथ है सिंपल पाथ चार हैं ठीक है सो दिस ग्राफ इज कनेक्टेड दिस इज नॉट कनेक्टेड देयर इज नो पाथ फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर ठीक है सो दिस इज कनेक्टेड द सेकंड वन इज नॉट कनेक्टेड एंड दिस इज अ कॉमन मिस्टेक Connected may there should be a path between every pair of vertices. If there is a path, then it is connected. If there is no path, it is not connected. Right. So these two vertices, so again this is a common mistake. When, when you are writing your minus, especially you are going to say these two vertices are not connected because you do not see an edge between them. That is wrong, wrong terminology these two vertices do not have an edge between them, but they are connected. They are connected because there is a path between these two vertices. So, we say two vertices are connected if there is a path between them and a graph is connected if there is a path between every pair of vertices. Is this clear to everyone? Okay. Let us understand the notion of a subgraph. 
So, this is a graph on the left hand side. Suppose I take a subset of the vertices and of the edges such that the resulting thing is also a graph. So, I took some vertices from here, this vertex, so this you can see it is corresponding, this, this I took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 vertices from here, there are 13 vertices in here, I took 11 of them and I took some of the edges between these vertices, I have not taken all the edges, as you can see this edge is not here, right? this would be called a subgraph of this graph. Right? I cannot take this edge right? because the other end point of this edge right, is not there, I have not included it here at all. Right? For an edge, the two vertices between which the edge is running are also called the end points of that edge. Right? So, this edge, each edge has two end points and those are the two end points. So, this is called a subgraph of this graph. Clear? Okay. Now, let us understand what a connected component is. A connected component is a maximal connected subgraph. So, suppose this is a graph, this is one graph, right? This is one graph, it is not three graphs that I have drawn, I have drawn just one graph here. This is not a connected graph, is this connected? Kya hua? This is not a connected graph, why? Because there is no path from here to here. Ye to do bar bol chuka ki ye pura ek hi graph hai. Thik hai? Ye pura ek graph hai, ek dabbe ke andar. Thik hai? This is not connected because there is no path from here to here, there is no path from here to here. Yeah? So, this is not a connected graph. If I look at this subgraph, this subgraph, it is connected, just this subgraph, these three vertices and these three edges, it is connected. These four vertices and these three edges are also connected. These five vertices and the seven edges on them are also connected, right. These three are the connected components of this graph. Okay. Now, what is the definition of a connected? It is a maximal connected subgraph. What does a maximal connected subgraph mean? Right. Okay. So, let us, this needs to be understood more carefully. Right. Suppose I were to take this vertex, this vertex and this vertex, right. And I were to take this edge and this edge this is a subgraph? Yes or no? This is a subgraph of the original graph, but this is not a connected component. I am not going to call this a connected component. Why? Because it is not maximal. So, what does maximal mean? So, maximal, The so when we say maximal in this class, we will mean a set is called maximal if we cannot increase the size of the set while retaining the property. So, a, a set is said to be maximal with respect to a certain property if we cannot add more elements to the set and retain the property, right. That is not true here. I can add more elements to this set. I can add more edges or I can add more vertices and both, right. So, I can add this edge and it is still connected. I can add this vertex and this edge and it is still connected. I can add this vertex and this edge and it is still connected. I can add this edge now, it is still connected. I can add this edge now, it is still connected. Now, if I add any other vertex or any other edge, suppose I decided to add this vertex, I add this, but it is not connected anymore. Yeah? So, this is a maximal connected subgraph. And so, we will call this a connected component. So, this entire thing is a connected component. This is also a connected component and this is also a connected component. 
yeah iske andar i cannot add any other vertices and still have the property of it being connected so essentially what how you know intuitively how do you think of connected components you just see which are the pieces which are connected amongst each other each of them is a connected component okay as simple as that yeah so this graph has three connected components okay more terminology forest forest what is a forest forest is a jungle a jungle is a collection of trees and animals but we'll leave out the animals so we are thinking of a forest as a collection of trees right so these are the trees in the forest okay now what is a tree here okay a tree here is a connected graph which does not have any cycles in it huh it's the same as the tree that we had till now except that jo abhi tak jo trees the unko hum rooted trees kehte hain rooted trees kyu kehte hain kyunki un sab mein notion of ek root hota hai yahan pe notion of root kuch nahi hai kyunki wahan notion of root hota hai तो आप जब रूट से हैंग कर देते हैं ट्री को तो पेरेंट चाइल्ड रिलेशनशिप्स डिफाइन हो जाती हैं दे इज अ नोड उसके चिल्ड्रन होते हैं उसका पेरेंट होता है एंड सो ऑन एंड नॉन यहां पे वी डोंट हैव एनी सच नोशन ठीक है तो इसलिए उस, उसको वहां से डिस्टिंग करने के लिए हम इसको फ्री ट्री बिल बोल सकते हैं अदरवाइज ट्री ही बोलेंगे राइट इट विल बी क्लियर फ्रॉम द कॉन्टेक्स कि हम एक रूटेड ट्री की बात कर रहे हैं या एक अनरूटेड ट्री की बात कर रहे हैं सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ ट्री इट इज अ कनेक्टेड सबग्राफ एज यू कैन सी and it does not have any cycle in it this is also a tree this is also a tree this is also a tree when you have a collection of trees it's a forest theek hai so forest is a collection of trees great so everyone understands this <coughs> what are trees tree is a connected subgraph which does not have any cycle in it <coughs> okay uh more so i'm typically going to use n to denote the number of vertices and m to denote the number of edges in any graph theek hai so what is a complete graph a complete graph is one in which there is an edge between every pair of vertices ठीक है बिटवीन एवरी पेयर ऑफ वर्ट इज देर इज एन एच दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ कंप्लीट ग्राफ दिस इज अ ग्राफ ऑन फाइव वर्ट इज बिटवीन एवरी पेयर ऑफ वर्ट इज देर इज एन एच सो हाउ मेनी एजेस डज अ कंप्लीट ग्राफ हैव एन सी टू राइट बिकॉज देर आर एन सी टू पेयर ऑफ वर्ट इज एंड देर इज एन एच बिटवीन एवरी पेयर एंड सो यू हैव सो मेनी एजेस How many edges does a complete directed graph have? Two times n c two. A directed and a complete, right? So basically, there will have to be an edge in both directions. Right? So it will become twice. So if a graph is not complete, then the number of edges will going to be strictly less than n choose two. right so in an undirected graph this is the maximum number of edges that a graph can have n choose to isse zyada edges ho hi nahi sakti kam se kam kitni edges ho sakti hai graph ke andar suppose i give you a graph on n vertices zero it can it might not have any edge at all right so the minimum number of edges in a graph on n vertices is zero and the maximum number of edges is n choose to yeah okay so once again we have n number of vertices m number of edges what about minimum in a connected graph yeah that's this line so suppose in a tree so what is a tree recall a tree is a connected graph which does not have any cycle in it theek okay? hai 
how many edges are there in a tree? I have said number of edges in the tree is n minus 1. <coughs> Why? Every pair of so we can have our one two one two three up the length. Hmm. So number of edges there will be so it is as two degree two. Each vertex is degree two, no? In a tree, does in a tree every vertex is degree two? No. ये देखिए ये इतने आपके ट्रीज हैं वॉट यू मीन कमिंग टू अ नोड सो इज दिस एज कमिंग इन टू दिस नोड और इज दिस एज कमिंग इन टू दिस नोड ओके लेट्स प्रूव दिस ओके घबराने वाली बात नहीं है इट्स ट्रू स्टेटमेंट तो इसका प्रूफ भी होगा ये एक सिंपल सा राइट सो लेट्स प्रूव दैट सो व्हाट विल बी द प्रूफ सो वी हैव टू प्रूव दैट अ ट्री ऑन एन वर्टिसेस has n minus 1 edges induction se karte as simple as that theek hai so induction se proof by induction so what should be the base case let's say n equals 2 theek hai so suppose i have a कनेक्टेड ग्राफ ऑन टू वर्टिसेस पहली प्रॉपर्टी है कनेक्टेड होना चाहिए तो उसमें तो ये एज होनी ही होनी पड़ेगी और कोई एज हो ही नहीं हो ही नहीं सकती ग्राफ में तो एक एज होगी तो स्टेटमेंट इज ट्रू सो नंबर ऑफ एजेस इक्वल्स एन माइनस वन इक्वल्स वन सो इंडक्शन हाइपोथेसिस क्या होगी हमारी स्टेटमेंट ट्रू for all n for all n less than or equal to k let's say theek hai so now the induction step so we have a graph on so given a graph on k plus 1 vertices why should this have k edges नहीं कौन सा एक्स्ट्रा नोड ऐड किया है मुझे तो कोई नहीं पता आपने मुझे ग्राफ दिया के प्लस वन वर्टिसेस का आप कह रहे हैं इसमें के एजेस है मैं कैसे प्रूव करूंगा कोई भी एक नोड हटा दें हाँ वन लीफ गुड ओके सो ही सेंग समथिंग यूजफुल ही सेंग देर इज नो साइकिल इन द ग्राफ वी हैव टू यूज समवेयर द फैक्ट दैट देर इज नो साइकिल इन द ग्राफ आप उसको नहीं यूज करेंगे तो आपने सारे ग्राफ्स में प्रूफ कर दिया कि सब ग्राफ्स जो भी कनेक्टेड है उनमें एन माइनस वन एजेस है राइट वो तो ट्रू नहीं है तो कहीं पे आपको यही फैक्ट यूज करना है कि इस ग्राफ में कोई साइकिल नहीं है अगर ग्राफ में कोई साइकिल नहीं है तो ही सेज दैट देर हैज टू बी वन लीफ ये लीफ क्या चीज होती है अभी तक तो गुड सो लेट्स डिफाइन अ लीफ नाउ एज अ as a vertex a leaf is a vertex of degree 1 theek hai so uh, his claim is that this tree or given a graph on k vertices given a tree on k vertices k plus 1 vertices right we are given a tree we are proving this so the tree or every tree has a leaf kya karenge is claim ka abhi dekhenge baad mein but ye claim true hai ki nahi har ek tree mein ek leaf honi zaruri hai kaise prove karenge isko 
हाँ तो इसको प्रूव करने का बहुत आसान सा तरीका है आपने एक वर्टिक्स लिया कोई भी एक वर्टिक्स ले लीजिए अपनी ट्री में उससे एक कोई एज इंसिडेंट होगी होगी अगर नहीं हुई इससे कोई भी एज इंसिडेंट तो ये कनेक्टेड ही नहीं है किसी से तो इससे कोई ना कोई एज इंसिडेंट होगी तो आप इस वर्टेक्स पे चले गए फिर यहाँ से अगर ये लीफ नहीं है वर्टेक्स अगर या तो ये वर्टेक्स लीफ है तो मिल गई लीफ हमें यही तो हमें प्रूव करना था कि इस ग्रेस ट्री में एक लीफ है और अगर लीफ नहीं है तो इस पर एक और एज होनी चाहिए अगर लीफ नहीं है ये तो इसकी डिग्री एटलीस्ट टू होनी चाहिए तो एक एज तो ये थी जिससे हम आए और एक एज और कोई होनी चाहिए जिससे हम बाहर जाएंगे ठीक है बाहर जाके दूसरी वर्टेक्स पर पहुंच जाएंगे यहां से एक एज तो ये थी जिससे हम आए एक एज और होनी चाहिए जिससे हम बाहर जाएंगे अगर नहीं है तो ये लीफ हो गई ये वाली वर्टेक्स तो ऐसे ऐसे हम करते जा सकते हैं कब तक करते जा सकते हैं सो मे बी वी कम बैक टू वन ऑफ द वर्टिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी विजिटेड अगर ऐसा होता है तो इसका मतलब तो एक साइकिल बन गई सो इट इज नॉट अ ट्री तो अगर हम वापस नहीं आते हैं तो फिर हम एक ऐसी वर्टेक्स पे पहुंच जाएंगे जहां से हम आगे जा ही नहीं सकते ठीक है तो अगर हम ऐसी वर्टेक्स पे पहुंच जाते हैं जहां से हम कहीं जा ही नहीं सकते तो वो लीफ हो गई क्योंकि उस पर एक ही एज इंसिडेंट है तो इसलिए हर एक ट्री में एक लीफ तो होनी जरूरी है ठीक है अब इसका क्या करेंगे एक लीफ तो है उसका क्या करेंगे उस लीफ को हम क्लिप कर देते हैं ठीक है तो ये वाली जो लीफ है जो हमें मिली इसको और इससे जो एक एज इंसिडेंट है इसको हटा देते हैं तो अब हमारे पास क्या बचा एक ट्री बचा एक ये ट्री क्यों होगा ये पूरा का पूरा तो ट्री था तो ये क्यों ट्री होगा क्यों कनेक्टेड रहेंगे बिकॉज दैट वॉज लीफ इसलिए हम कनेक्टेड रहेंगे ये भी आपको छोटा सा आर्ग्यूमेंट करना पड़ेगा नहीं 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 देखिए हम कह रहे हैं कि हमने ये वर्टेक्स और ये एज हटा दिया बाकी वर्टिस पर बिटवीन या सो ये जो बाकी वर्टिस हैं इनके बीच में अभी भी पाथ है एग्जैक्टली दिस एज कैन नॉट बी पार्ट ऑफ एनी सिंपल पाथ बिटवीन एनी टू वर्टिस या बिकॉज अगर आप इस एज को यूज करके कहीं इस वर्टेक्स पर पहुंचे तो फिर आपको वापस इस एज को यूज करके इस वर्टेक्स पर आना पड़ेगा तो वो तो सिंपल पाथ नहीं रहा आपने एक एज को रिपीट कर दिया तो दिस एज कैन नॉट बी पार्ट ऑफ एनी सिंपल पाथ एंड सो इवन आफ्टर आई रिमूव दिस एज एंड दिस वर्ट एक्स दिस देर इज अ पाथ बिटवीन एवरी पेयर ऑफ वर्टिस सो दिस इज स्टिल कनेक्टेड राइट दिस इज कनेक्टेड एंड बाई रिमूविंग एन एज एंड वर्ट एक्स आई कैन नॉट क्रिएट अ साइकिल राइट अगर पहले इसमें साइकिल नहीं थी तो ऐसा नहीं कि एक एज रिमूव करने से मेरी साइकिल बन जाएगी ठीक है तो ये अभी भी ट्री है अगर ये अभी भी ट्री है तो आई कैन अप्लाई माई इंडक्शन हाइपोथिस ऑन इट सो इसके अंदर ये ट्री कितने वर्टिस पर है एक वर्टेक्स हमने हटाया है वी हैव रिमूव्ड ओनली वन वर्टेक्स सो दिस इज अ ट्री सो दिस इज अ ट्री ऑन के वर्टिस एंड हैज के माइनस वन एजेस दिस इज बाई इंडक्शन हाइपोथिस तो so, अगर यहां पे k माइनस वन एजेस हैं और ये वाली एक एज और है तो इसका मतलब पूरे इस ट्री पे k प्लस वन वर्टिस वाला जो ट्री था उसमें k एजेस थी एंड सो वी प्रूव दिस ठीक है देखिए आपको यू हैव टू यूज द फैक्ट बोथ द फैक्ट से क्रिटिकल दैट इट्स अ कनेक्टेड ग्राफ एंड इट डज नॉट हैव अ साइकिल इन इट अदरवाइज यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू आर्ग्यू राइट दैट इट इज के माइनस वन एजेस अगर ग्राफ कनेक्टेड नहीं है तो उसमें तो जीरो एजेस हो सकती हैं और अगर उसमें साइकिल परमिट करते हैं आप तो कितनी एजेस हो सकती हैं अप टू के चूज टू एजेस हो सकती हैं तो के माइनस वन तभी होंगी जब दोनों प्रॉपर्टीज हैं कनेक्टेड भी है और साइकिल नहीं है ओके सो दैट्स द प्रूफ फॉर दिस या एवरीवन वन फॉलोज दिस 
you, most textbooks would have this proof also. So, you can also go back and, and look at one of the texts. So, if the number of edges is less than n minus 1 in a graph, then the graph cannot be connected at all. Why? This statement, if the number of edges is less than n minus 1, then the graph is not connected. Right, so proof by contradiction, okay. So, suppose it is connected, if it is connected, then uh, okay. So, 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 okay. So, let us uh, follow this argument, right. So, suppose it is, uh, it is connected, if it is connected then uh, why is it not a tree? It is not a tree because? It a because it has a cycle. So, let us take, let us remove an edge from the cycle. Dekhi, agar aap ek cycle mein se koi edge remove karte hain, to usse graph disconnect nahi ho sakta kabhi. Kyun? Oops, I should have switched, but okay. So, what, we, what are we trying to argue? If number of edges is less than n minus 1, then G is not connected, right. So, this is an, another useful thing to remember that suppose I have a cycle. So, G here will take as a graph, not a tree. G is a graph, right. So, suppose I have a graph in which there is a cycle. Bada sa graph hai, kya pe ek cycle hai. Ab main isme se ek edge ko hata deta अगर पहले ये ग्राफ कनेक्टेड था तो अभी भी ये कनेक्टेड होगा क्यों आप कहेंगे ये एज हटा दी कोई ना कोई दो वर्टिसेस के बीच का पाथ खत्म हो गया किन दो वर्टिसेस के बीच का पाथ खत्म हो गया मे बी एक वर्टेक्स यहां है और एक और वर्टेक्स आपकी यहां है इनके बीच का पाथ जो है खत्म हो गया मतलब वो पाथ इस एज को यूज कर रहा था अगर वो इस एज को यूज कर रहा था तो वो ऐसे जाके ऐसे जाके और फिर अब ऐसे जा सकता है हाँ इस एज को हम इस पूरे से रिप्लेस कर सकते हैं तो पाथ अभी भी रहेगा सिंपल नहीं होगा पर पाथ तो रहेगा पाथ होगा तो कनेक्टेड रहा ठीक है तो अगर आपके पास कोई साइकिल है इफ यू हैव अ साइकिल एंड इफ यू रिमूव एनी एज फ्रॉम द साइकिल देन यू कैनॉट मेक द ग्राफ डिसकनेक्टेड बाई डूइंग दैट सो वॉट इज द आर्ग्यूमेंट दैट टू प्रूव दिस क्लेम if suppose i have a graph on less than n minus 1 uh, on less than n minus 1 edges which is connected why is it not a tree it's not a tree because there is a cycle in let me remove an edge from the cycle i have only reduced the number of edges and it's still connected right if there is an, another cycle let me still remove another edge so i'll only get less than n minus 1 edges and the graph will remain connected right eventually i'll get a tree after removing all of this so i am contradicting the earlier claim which says that any tree has to have exactly n minus 1 edges in it. It cannot have less than n minus 1 edges, right. So, any graph which has less than n minus 1 edges cannot be connected. Is there something that is not clear? Right. So, a uh, couple of examples n equals 5, m equals 4. This is a tree on 5 vertices, it has to have 4 edges. Uh, this is a tree, this is a graph on 5 vertices and 3 edges, and uh, it cannot be a tree, it cannot be a connected graph at all. Okay. Okay. So, let me ask you a question. Suppose I have a graph on n vertices and it has n minus k edges, n minus k edges. How many connected components do you think it has? How many connected components do you think it has? 
I have a graph on n vertices and n minus k edges, how many connected components it has? K or more? K or more? Okay. Right, k when there would be no cycle and if there were cycles then it could even have more number of connected components. Okay, try to prove this, it is a very simple exercise. So, you are given a graph on n vertices and n minus k edges, how many connected components does it have? Okay, so more terms spanning tree. A spanning tree is a subgraph which means you are given a graph, so it is a subgraph of a graph and this subgraph has to be a tree and it should include all the vertices of the graph, right. So, spanning tree mein do words hai, tree which means the subgraph has to be a tree and dusra word is spanning, spanning matlab it should include everything, include everything here means include all the vertices. So, as you can see this subgraph includes all the whatever 4, 3, 7 and 3, 10, 13 vertices that are there and it is a tree, there is no cycle here. So, this is a spanning tree of this graph, this is the graph and this is the spanning tree of this graph. G, must be connected initially. G has to be connected, if G is not connected then there is no notion of a spanning tree, right. If G is not connected then no subgraph of the graph of G can be a tree or uh, cannot be a spanning tree sorry. बहुत सारे टर्म्स हो रहे हैं तो थोड़ा जल्दी जाना चाहिए सो दिस इज अ यूजफुल थिंग टू हैव यू नो क्वाइट ऑफन योर नेटवर्क वुड जस्ट बी अ स्पैनिंग ट्री सपोज दीज आर पॉइंट्स दैट आई वांट टू कनेक्ट राइट सो सी दीज आर सिटीज एंड दीज आर पॉसिबल रोड्स दैट आई कैन बिल्ड बट आई जस्ट वांट टू पुट द मिनिमम अमाउंट ऑफ एफर्ट आई वांट टू बिल्ड एज फ्यू रोड्स एज पॉसिबल so that all these cities are still connected. So, I could build a spanning tree, yeah. But this is, this does not provide you any fault tolerance. What does that mean? Agar ek bhi road jo hai, band ho gai, to disconnect ho jayega. You cannot reach from some city to some other city then, right. As you can see, if I cut off this link, then these four vertices would be disconnected from the other 9 vertices. Ye agar band ho jati hai, ye road agar mein cut kar deta hon, toh these 6 vertices would be disconnected from the other 7, right. So, spanning trees are useful, but they provide, do not provide much fault tolerance, okay. Bridges, let us talk about bridges. Königsberg, right, this is a city in Germany or Austria, I do not remember where. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, Pregel River, okay, I do not remember where this is. Well, uh, this city has this nice thing, this is, uh, there is a river flowing through the city and there is an island in the river and uh, there are bridges in this manner. So, A is this island and there is a bridge from here to here, here, so there are 7 bridges in all, right. These black bars are the bridges. So, the question is, can you start from here? let us say or any point. So, can one walk across each bridge exactly once and return to the starting point? Why no? So, suppose I start from here, I can take this bridge, grow here. You can go on land also. Ha ha, you can go on land of course. Okay, you can reach from here, then you can reach from here. राइट फिर आप अगर यहां से यहां चले जाते हैं तो आप वापस यहां आने के लिए इस पॉइंट पर आपको एक और ब्रिज चाहिए पर ब्रिज तो आप दोबारा नहीं आ सकते तो आपको यहां से यहां गए यहां से यहां गए सो ऑन एंड ऑन लेट्स सी वेदर वी कैन सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑन सो सपोज यू नो दिस वुड हैव बीन यूजफुल इफ यू वर अ पोस्टमैन हु हैड टू विजिट द वेरियस ब्रिजेस राइट एंड यू डिड नॉट वांट टू रिट्रेस योर स्टेप्स सो दिस इज आल्सो नोन एज ऑयलर्स प्रॉब्लम एंड Euler 
proved that this is not possible and will give a simple proof for that fact. Right? So, we can model this thing as a graph. Yeah? So, there is this island A. So, these are the these are going to be the vertices of my graph. This island A, this is one piece of land. Then there is this part B, right? Because I can go from anywhere to here. This is one vertex, there is a vertex D and there is a vertex C, which is this part. So, I will have a graph with four vertices in it A, B, C, D, right? And then depending upon, so since there is a bridge from B to A, in fact, there are two bridges from B to A, yeah? So, I will put two edges between B and A. Similarly, there are two bridges between A and C, so I will put two edges between A and C. There is one bridge from A to D, so I will put one edge between A and D. There is a bridge between D and B, so I will put one bridge, one edge between B and D and an edge between C and D. So, I will get, this is not a graph. Why is this not a graph? Because we did not define a notion of two edges between a pair of vertices, right? We just talked of a pair of vertices, right? The edges do not form a set, they form a multi set. So, this is called a multi graph. What is a multi graph? In which there could be many edges between a pair of vertices, that is called a multi graph. But this captures that problem in a certain sense. So, what is so an Eulerian tour is a path that traverses every edge exactly once and returns to the first vertex, that is exactly what we want to do, right. We, because these are the bridges, so we want to traverse each bridge exactly once and return to the starting vertex. Can you do that on this graph? So, the same problem can now be thought of here. Can I start from A and come back to A and, and uh, visit each or traverse each edge exactly once? So, the same question is saying, can you draw this picture without lifting your pencil? Yeah? without lifting your pencil or redrawing an edge, you know, coming back o over a line twice. Huh? So, nahi kar sakte, kyun nahi kar sakte, iska bada simple sa reason hai. So, Euler theorem says that you can do this if and only if every vertex has even degree. Kyun? Kyunki aap, when you come to a vertex, you come by one edge and then you have to go by another edge and if you come again, then you will need another edge to add fresh edge to go off by. So, every vertex has to have an even degree for it this to work, but here there are two vertices with odd degrees or three vertices with odd degrees, oh, sorry all vertices have odd degrees, right. So, clearly this cannot be done. Yeah. Okay. So, now let us quickly do the uninteresting part, the abstract data type. So, uh, so the graph can be thought of as a, as a, as a container of positions. So, you have the regular, uh, regular methods, right, for any positional container like queues and stacks. We always had these methods called size and is empty and elements, elements would return all the vertices and the edges let us say, right. And you can have some methods like swap, which can swap uh, to positions, replace element, those kind of things. These are methods associated with the regular positional container. The position, but the position swap is a generic method for any positional container, right. When you are saying that provide two positions and swap the uh, contents at those two positions. That is the swap method. Right. So, here I am not saying it specifically to the graph abstract data type, right. You will have to think of what it would mean. So, it, you could decide on what it means here for this particular data type. But I am saying it is a generic method. These are all generic methods for positional containers, and I am just saying it in that context, right. So, here I have the methods which are specific to graphs. So, num vertices could be a num, uh, method which returns the number of vertices, num edges number of edges, vertices would now be an enumeration of all the vertices, right. So, it would be a method which returns a iterator, right, which will let you iterate through the various vertices in the graph. 
edges could be a method which returns all the edges. Okay. Directed edges would be a method if you had a directed graph, it would return all the enumerate all the directed edges in the graph. No, what does enumerator do an enum or an iterator? It basically returns an object which has two methods associated with it. One method is next and the other method is whether there is anything left has next, whether there is a next method, next element at all or not. Right? So, as every time you call next, it gives you a next object in the enumeration. Right? So, when you are enumerating edges, I call next once, it will give me one edge. When I call next again, it will give me another edge. What order these edges come in that you typically do not know. Right? It depends upon how you have implemented the iterator. Undirected edges could similar, similarly enumerate all the undirected edges. Incident edges, if I specify a vertex, it would enumerate all the edges incident at that vertex. Right? Okay. So, this is for an undirected graph, incident edges. For a directed graph, right, there are two kinds of edges. Either there would be edges which start from this vertex or there would be edges which end at this vertex. So, you could have a notion of in incident edges which are edges entering the vertex V, which are ending at vertex V and you could have an out incident edges which are edges which are starting from vertex V, going out of vertex V. Opposite, so I specify an edge E, right? all of these are objects and edge is also an object and I specify one end point of the edge. So, this method gives me the other end point of that edge degree gives me the degree of a vertex in degree so degree would be for an undirected graph for an undirect for a directed graph there would be the notion of an in degree and an out degree in degree would be number the number of edges coming into the vertex out degree would be the number of edges leaving the vertex similarly i could have adjacent vertices adjacent vertices would be a method which returns an enumerate an iterator over all the vertices which are adjacent to this particular vertex this would be for the for an undirected graph for a directed graph you could similarly have a notion of in adjacent and an out adjacent vertices yeah then you could have a method r adjacent whether vertices two vertices v and w are adjacent or not right so this would be return a boolean value end vertices given an edge it will return the two end points of the edge origin for an directed edge e it would return where the edge is starting from. Destination for a directed edge E, it would return where the edge E is ending. Given an edge E, it will tell whether it is directed or not. Right? This method would be useful when you have what are called mixed graphs. Mixed graphs, some edges are directed and some are undirected. Can you give me a setting where it would be useful to have a mixed graph? What kind of a problem setting can you imagine where it would be natural to have? Yeah? Roads, a traffic network once again, where you have some roads are one ways, right? So, your bi-directed edges, roads which are two way could be undirected edges and roads which are only one way could be directed edges, right? So, there such a method would be useful because given an edge, you can then determine whether it is a directed edge or an undirected edge. Okay. Uh, I will just take, I guess this is the last slide, yet. yes it is. So, make undirected E, so you are given an edge E and you set it to be an undirected edge. You can have a method which reverses the direction, so these are, you can have tons and tons of update methods also, right. You can have methods to create the graph change, remove an edge, remove a vertex, do whatever you want, right. So, set direction from, so you can set the direction of an edge suitably, you just look through this, these slides are available, right. So, this is just a subset of methods, depending upon what application you have, you could design your own set of methods, right. So, the graph can be thought, thought of as a data type is an abstract data type on which you can have a bunch of methods which you can use to update and modify the data. 
So with that, we'll end our discussion on graphs. We'll continue it in the next class, however, to see how to actually represent a graph. What kind of data structures can you use to represent graphs? Yes, sir.